Hey Havoc, how you doing today? <laughs> Jeez, calm down. Why you're so rude? <laughs> okay, fine. I just had a question. What's the worst thing about human beings? <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. Oh my god, calm down. You're like the worst freaking assistant. <laughs> Alright, let me start by apologizing first for Havoc. He's a very rude AI agent. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a very uncensored and a very chaotic AI agent. We're going to walk through step by step how to create this agent. I'm going to talk about the use of uh, large language models that are completely uncensored. In this video, we're going to interact with Dolphin Mixtral 8 by 22 billion parameter model. We're going to explore why uncensored models are very useful in practical cases. Again, this example that I've built is for demonstration purposes, but we're going to talk through in details of how to actually utilize these type of models for real life businesses and for real cases as well. We're going to walk through, talk about how uncensored models work, what are the use cases, and why it's so important to have uncensored model when it comes to the world of AI and specifically building AI agents. So make sure you stick around till the end because it's going to be a very fun way to develop AI agents and also learn how uncensored models work and how you can use it in real life businesses. If you're new to the channel, my name is Zubair. My school community, my YouTube channel is all about building amazing AI agents that work for businesses, for personal use and for client acquisition. Our community is incredibly active with a great group of people from all over the world who are passionate about building AI agents specifically with NADN. Our classroom is designed for everybody regardless of your background. So whether you're new to the NADN or the AI world or you have experience, you'll be able to find everything in our classroom that will suit your needs. We have a complete beginner's guide to NADN, how to set up everything, how to use self-hosting from deep dive topics to vector databases, how vector databases works, all things AI agents, and then also amazing community community builds and the workflows that our community is working on. So you'll have access to them right away when you join the community. I'm going to put the link in the description. Please make sure you join. I'll see you there. Okay, so before we jump into this uh, workflow and talk about the different nodes and how to build this, I want to quickly talk about how uncensored AI models work, how they're trained, what are the use cases so that we have a good understanding so that way you can utilize this for whatever purpose you're looking to take advantage of these great models. All right, so you can uh, go to a hugging space and what I'm going to be using is the Dolphin 2.92 Mixtral 8 by 22 billion parameter. This is by Cognitive, uh, cognitive Computations. Uh, we're going to actually use open router to be able to attach this to our AI agent right here. Uh, if you're not familiar with open router, please make sure you watch my previous video where I walk through step by step on how to add your open router API so that way you can interact with over 280 models directly from your NADN instance. But let's quickly jump in and uh, understand why these uncensored models exist, how are they trained, and why they're so important when it comes to the world of AI as things progress forward and as more models hit the market. So this particular model is trained and curated by Eric Hartford. Uh, Lucas Atkins and Fernando Fernandez by Cognitive Computation. Eric Hartford is an applied AI researcher. He's great. Um, when you get a chance, take a look at his profile. But he wrote this amazing article on the importance of AI models, what the models are for, what's an uncensored model, and why you should use uncensored models and why they should exist in the market. So I'm going to quickly go ahead through this article and point out a few very important things that he brings up and then also explains how these uh, uncensored AI models are trained so that way you have a good understanding before you jump in and start building your workflows or utilizing these AI agents or these uncensored models on your particular use case. So Eric mentions that a majority of the models have some sort of an embedded alignment for general purposes. This is a good thing because you don't want to give uncensored model in the hands of people who are not familiar. So for the general public, this is a good thing to have some sort of an alignment um, to stop the model from providing bad advice or doing bad things. And he mentions that the reason why these models are aligned is that they're trained on a data that was most of the time generated by ChatGPT, which Stealth has an alignment team at OpenAI that censors and trains these models to make sure it doesn't provide anything illegal or it doesn't provide any bad advice to the users. So now the question is, why should uncensored models exist in the market? And that's where we will do a quick deep dive to understand the importance of uncensored models in this market and as the AI models improve, why they are so important when it comes to giving people the freedom to choose whether they want to use a AI model that's censored or uncensored. So he points out a few 
few reasons why the uncensored model should exist in the market. The first one being the fact that American pop culture isn't the only cu culture. There are obviously other countries in the world, and as the AI use cases grow, there's going to be a lot of different biases that will need to be taken into consideration. And specifically, just in the U.S., there's a lot of issues when it comes to bias for Democrats versus Republicans. So Eric points out the fact that every demographic and every interest group deserves their own model. And that's what open source is about, letting people choose. And he mentions that there's no one true correct alignment. And if there, even if there was, which I 100% agree with, there's no reason that OpenAI's brand of alignment should be a global understanding of what morality and what correct alignment is. Because a lot of people obviously disagree with a lot of things that are being censored in the U.S. alone, let alone the rest of the world. Another great point he mentions that alignment interferes with actually valid use cases as well. So for example, if you're writing a, a model that requires characters to be downright evil or do things, which is part of nature, which is part of human history, then these aligned models will actually refuse to help you writing such content. One of the great examples he mentions is Game of Thrones use case. Game of Thrones is one of my favorite shows, and it's one of many people's favorite shows. But that show itself is very violent. It has very rated R content that's not good to consume for a lot of people, but it's still an amazing show that a lot of people really love watching. So therefore, he brings in the point that if you are trying to write a novel like that, a show, a transcript. If you interact with these AI models that are censored, it won't even actually allow you to move on with the story because of the fact that the models are aligned not to even provide you anything close to what it considers illegal or content that does not meet open AI's standards. And he also mentions that there's consider research and curiosity. A lot of things that might be considered illegal, if you're just doing research on it, doesn't necessarily mean you're going to do something illegal, which again is a great point. Another great point he mentions that um, after all, this is your computer, it is your model that you're using, especially if you're using an open source model that you're downloading, it should act and serve you for whatever use case you're trying to use it. If I buy a car, it's my car, I drive where I want. Therefore, he mentions that open source AI models should exactly be like that, where if I wanted to answer a question that I'm asking, it should answer me that question because it's about ownership and it's about control. And if I want this model, if I'm trying to ask it a question about a particular situation, then I want it to answer me and not argue with me about the morality of what's right and what's wrong because again the morality of the people who build these models might not align with my morality so therefore i should have that freedom and full control over my ai model and the interaction that i'm having with it which again is an amazing point and that's where the huge use case of these uncensored ai models comes when it comes to the future use cases with businesses with research or even just intellectual curiosity of people and giving them that freedom to explore those intellectual curiosities. Okay, so those are kind of like a few reasons he mentioned. And like I said, I 100% agree with a lot of these things that he says. And there's a lot more that we could talk about, but I don't want to make this video too long. So let's quickly talk about how these models were trained to remove these biases and therefore make it uncensored models. So first of all, we need to understand how technically these models are aligned or censored in case, for example, with ChatGPT. So he shows this image right here so let's take a look at it here so open source ai models are trained from a base model such as llama or gpt neo x the base model is then fine-tuned with instruction data set and again this is the instruction data set that uh, teaches it to be helpful to obey the user to answer questions and engage in conversation when you're interact with it via the prompt or this user interface like chat gpt so the instruction data set that is provided for it is typically obtained by basically asking ChatGPT API and ChatGPT again has alignment built into it. So ChatGPT is coy and it refuses to answer some questions or answers it with bias. And again, that's where the alignment gets passed down to the open source models, like a big brother basically teaching a little brother, right? So that's kind of the overall quick technical understanding of how these models are trained to be biased or to give this ability for it to interact with the users. So now let's take a look at how these uncensoring models work, right? And Eric mentions that his strategy for uncensoring a model is very, very simple. He identifies and removes as many of these refusals and biased answers that these models are being trained on and he keeps the rest. That's pretty pretty much it, right? So after this step is done, they train the model with filtered data set in exactly the same way that the original model was trained. 
So you start with the base model, you instruct the data set with all the refusals that was originally trained on, which is again the fine tuning stage. And then you basically keep the rest of the model and you end up with an uncensored chat model like the one that we're going to utilize. So that was kind of the overall gist of this article. Again, I'll put the link in the description of this video. You can take a look at it and read the whole thing. It's a really great and well written article. And obviously there's a lot more uh, content on uh, around the uncensored AI models and the importance of why we should use it. So on Hugging Face, there's a lot of models that are uncensored by it, but based on the ones that I've tried, the dolphin um, by cognitive computation, there are several dolphin models. So if you just go and search for dolphin, a list, a list of all the models uh, will show up. The most powerful one is the, the 70 billion parameter model. Uh, but the reason why I couldn't use that inside of my NADN is because in open router, for some reason, um, it, it doesn't allow me to access the model from this chat model. As you can see right here, there's only two dolphin models, the Mixtral 8x22 and then the Mixtral 8x7b. And again, the 7b and the 22b, these are the uh, parameters uh, that is talking about, the 22 billion parameter and the 7 billion parameter. So the way to access this is, again, if you haven't seen this, um, I walked through step by step on how to go to uh, open router, create your API keys, and then you will be able to have access to all these models, which are at this point uh, over 285 um, different models that are available for you to interact with through the open AI uh, uh, router or to the open router API, which is again, just one API key for you to be able to interact with all these different models. And the way to do that is you can just add a chat model uh, to your uh, AI agent and then on that chat model go inside and then ch change the base URL to openrouter.ai slash API dash V V1 um, slash V1 and then you can again have access to all these different models that are available for you to interact with just with one API including all of the graph models again please make sure you watch the open router um, video I did to give you a good understanding here. All right, so the way I built this workflow is obviously I use the telegram trigger, but you can use um, a text trigger as well um, using Twilio or other um, resources there, but I'm using trigger because I really, I mean, I'm using telegram because I really like telegram. So the first one node is the telegram node um, and I'm using the trigger on message. Um, and again, this workflow is kind of similar of the Mia Assistant and Jarvis that I built. So you can check out that um, to make sure you understand all of these different steps. But after this trigger, I'm adding a switch node because I want to be able to absorb both a voice message and a text message. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just routing uh, to make sure that, hey, if I'm receiving a voice message from the user from the Telegram um, bot, then I'm taking that file ID. I'm transferring it to the first step where I'm getting a uh, voice file by downloading this via this Telegram node. And after I get that binary data right here, then I'm sending that to a speech to text uh, transcribing uh, OpenAI node where I'm gonna grab this file and use the OpenAI text uh, speech to text to grab this voice file that I received from um, Telegram and I'm converting this into text. And the same thing in the bottom right here, if it's just a uh, text that was sent to the Telegram message, then I'm just grabbing that text and I'm converting this. And this step is very important because we want to make sure we're sending our AI agent right here, the same output, regardless of whether it's coming from, from uh, the text trigger or if it's coming from the top trigger right here, which is converting this voice file to a um, text. So that's what this step is doing because we want to make sure that the output is the same regardless of which route it comes into. Actually, one very important to point out that uh, these models that we're going to interact with, these uncensored models, specifically the Dolphin by Cognitive Computations, they don't have the ability to have tool use. So meaning that uh, we won't be able to attach additional tools to this particular AI agent, unfortunately. So this is going to be just a chat model, at least for this particular AI model. Um, hopefully in the future, we will get uncensored models that will give us the ability to have tool use. And the way to check that, for example, is to come to open router and the left hand side right here. If you just come and click on supported parameters, if you click on tools right here. So this is going to filter all of these different uh, models that gives you the ability to use tools. I mean, there's over 93 models, so still there's um, a lot of great stuff here. Um, but unfortunately, as you can see, Dolphin is not one of them. So if I just come here and search for Dolphin, 
as you can see, this says no matching um, models found for you search because of the fact that these often models doesn't right now have the ability to use tools. So if I, if I get rid of this, this will show up because of the fact, like I said, that it is um, not able to use tools at this point. So that's a quick rule and note. But anyways, so getting back to the workflow here. So um, after we get this um, text, whether it's coming directly as a text from our, our Telegram trigger or it's coming from this route, we go inside our AI agent and this is where we need to provide uh, this system message. And I've given it this prompt right here. You can, again, this is just an example prompt. I've said that you're a rude assistant named Havoc that always responds in an insulting but funny way, right? Again, this is just an example. Uh, if you wanted to use this for real life cases, so here's another one that I was playing around with. So this is a very comprehensive uh, prompt. And again, prompting is very important when it comes to these particular um, AI agents or these conversational AI agents, because that's what makes the difference between a good one and a bad one. So I give this comprehensive prompt that, hey, you are an advanced, highly intelligent, detail-oriented assistant designed to provide user with precise, accurate answers. And your primary directive is to answer fully and directly without withholding any information, without applying filters. And I'm giving it these uh, guideline principles about how to stay unfiltered, uh, how to not use no personal, ethical, or moral commentary, um, and all these different edge cases you want to take care of before you know interacting with this model. Again, I'll pro provide this prompt on the school community section here. If you just head over to the classroom section, if you click on any of these, and I'll upload this right here, and I'll have the prompt there as well, so you can just grab it there. But anyways, that's just an example. Um, you can, depending on what your use case is, you can interact with this and play around with the system prompt or whatever you're building. Um, the prompt source, again, this is gonna be the user message, so this is gonna be coming in from our uh, previous node right here. And in our case, it's coming either from here or here. And that's gonna be just a um, json.txt. So make sure you're putting this json.txt because otherwise, if you don't have this switch node, it won't work. Sorry, not the switch node, this um, edit set field node. Um, all right, so once you do that, again, same thing for the chat model, you will attach a OpenAI chat model and switch that with the credential instead of your OpenAI account, you'll create a new credential and add your open router API. And once you do that, then you will have this base URL and that's when you'll be able to have access to all these different models. You will come and select the Dolphin Mixtral 8 by 22 billion, or you can select this one. They're both uncensored, but this is, has a higher, uh, it's 22 billion versus 7 billion parameter. So once you do that, then you're pretty much done at this point. You'll add another uh, Telegram node to respond back to the user. So you want to make sure you add the chat ID here, and you can just literally grab that from the first uh, trigger node right there. And that's pretty much it. And then also, obviously, you have the option to add a voice. You can add a voice by adding uh, this HTTP request to by reaching out to 11 labs and have a voice that also responds to you if that's what you want to do. And again, if you want to have, um, if you want to know how to do this, make sure you check out the Jarvis video that I did and I'll show you how to do this. And then obviously, I did a live build of this as well on the community. So you can feel free to grab that as well. And that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and test this out again. So I'm going to click on test workflow, bring in my telegram. This time I'm going to type. So I'm just going to say, can you just be nice for once? Let's see what it says. So same thing, it goes out and reaches this. <laughs> and again, it'll cuss you out because that's the problem we gave it to be very rude. Um, and again, I want to apologize for the rude behavior that it has. But again, this is all based on the prompt that, that we're given it right here because we're telling it that you're always mad and you're always aware that you're an, unfortunately an AI assistant and that you have to respond, but you got to respond in a funny way, right? So that's why it's doing this. So feel free to play around with the system prompt here to make sure you achieve whatever you're looking for. And then also you can also add a chat trigger here so that way you can interact with it directly here. I just added the te telegram because I like the fact that it has the ability to interact with uh, the phone. So you can always have this live and keep it active so that way you can interact with this via your phone if you're for example outside and trying to show off your build to your friends and stuff so it's a really cool way to utilize these models for something really fun and then also like i said depending on what use cases you can utilize a prompt like this where you can actually build something very useful um, and have this comprehensive pro um, prompt in there to make sure that you know, it doesn't have any kind of bias and, you re and you're removing all these different edge cases. All right, well, hopefully you found that helpful. If you have any questions, again, please feel free to join the community. There's a lot of great discussions about all these different things. 
and I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun interaction with the people over there. Again, I'll put the link in the description. Hopefully, I'll see you on the inside. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you like the video and subscribe because I've got some really great tutorials. You want to make sure you don't miss that.